Hey everyone, my name is Bogdan and welcome to Acura Addicted channel, helping you to navigate in the world of automotive repairs, maintenance and reviews. In this second episode for the second season, I'm going to show you how to replace rear shock absorbers. As always, the Russian version link is in the description. Let's roll! The DUI video is for 2008 Acura MDX Tech model, which is a second generation MDX, so this will also be applicable for model years from 2007 up to 2013, with the exception of US Sport Advance and Canadian Elite models, which are equipped with ADS, active damper system, allowing to electronically adjust stiffness characteristics by changing the density of the magnetorheological fluid inside the dampers with magnetic field introduced by electric current. I've also previously replaced the front shock absorbers. If you're interested, check out the link in the description. This is a fairly straightforward procedure, which should take you from 20 to 30 minutes on one side. There is a chance, however, that the lower bolts securing the dampers to the lower control arms are extremely rusted, so even with penetrating oil, those might pose quite a bit of a challenge if you don't have a powerful impact wrench or even a hammer handy. The problem is because of the rust, the bolt gets seized in the damper sleeve, so I suggest setting aside a day for this. After you're done, alignment is recommended. Here's what you need to be able to complete this. New parts part numbers in the description, new bolts, two for each side, a breaker bar, a half inch ratchet, a 17 mm socket, car jack for leveling the lower control arm to remove the old dampers and install the new ones. You might also need or just want to use impact wrench to speed up the process, thread locker to apply to the bolts when reassembling, vice grips in case the welded nut for the lower bolt snaps off the lower control arm, just like mine did, penetrating oil, magnetic tray, torque wrench if you want to properly torque your fasteners. Alright, let's get to it! Start with blocking the front wheels so the vehicle doesn't roll forward. Then raise your vehicle with a jack, in this case I'm using a hydraulic jack, and place it on jack stand. After loosening and removing your wheel lug nuts or bolts, remove the wheel. Since I'm working on one side at a time, I prefer to have one wheel removed at a time for extra stability. This is the rear damper. It connects the body to the lower control arm. First, loosen and remove the lower 17mm bolt. I suggest applying a lot of penetrating oil and let it sit first, and use a breaker bar or a good impact wrench. Great, now the weld did not snap off, while the bolt is still seized in the damper sleeve. Let's try the breaker bar. Boy, I need to buy me one of those high torque impact wrenches. As you can see, it's easier said than done. The bolt is definitely rusted and seized within the damper lower sleeve. It doesn't want to come out. There it is, finally. All rusted to the point threads are almost gone entirely. Now that the lower one is out, the upper one should not be a problem, 
since it's hidden away from elements. There we go. Compress the damper so the upper sleeve is free and take the damper out. Here's the new damper. They're not different for left and right, so it doesn't matter which one you're installing. Just make sure it's not upside down. The outer plastic cover should be facing down. Install the lower bolt first. Don't forget to use the new bolt and apply some thread locker so you don't have the same problem removing it next time. Now since the welded knot has snapped off for me and is completely round, I'm holding it with vice grips, so it doesn't rotate with the bolt when I'm tightening it down. Here I'm installing the card jack under the lower control arm, so I can easily raise or lower it as I need to secure the new damper. Torque the lower bolt to 64 newton meters or 47 pound feet. There. Now compress the new damper and install the sleeve to its socket. As you can see, even at the maximum stretch the sleeve doesn't line up with the hole. So I raise the lower control arm with the help of the jack a little bit. It's all aligned now. Here's the new bolt. Even though there should be no problem with the upper bolt, I still prefer to apply some thread locker. And also torque the upper bolt to 64 newton meters or 47 pound feet. There we go. You can now lower and remove the card jack. The only thing left to do is to put the wheel back on. Tighten the nuts or bolts. Then remove the stand, lower the vehicle down and torque the lug nuts or bolts to spec. In my case, it's 127 newton meters or 94 pound feet. And don't forget about that alignment. That's it. If this was helpful, rate the video, leave your comments below and hit that subscribe and bell buttons for more videos just like this. Thank you for watching. Drive safe. Use your turn signals and remember, anything is possible with the right tools and motivation.